the top 20 most frequently asked questions by newbies about wholesaling. Hello Facebook, this is Ty AK, The Flip Man. Here's your opportunity to take advantage of my most recent Flippinar where I answer questions one through five of that top 20. So please enjoy the video. Please like it, share it. Let's get it. Top 20 newbie frequent asked questions about wholesaling houses, one through five. Welcome to this week's Flippinar. My name is Ty, AKA the Flip Man. And tonight's topic is basically going to go over questions that I've been asked whether it was last week, today, seven years ago, or even eight years ago when I started even putting out these videos or same questions come up. Um, even though <laughs> I don't think it's what, one of these questions I haven't answered in individual videos and some of them in multiple videos. So I guess people keep asking, they're they not, they not getting the answers that they need. So uh, I'm going to go over uh, all of that uh, tonight. Uh, well, the first five, as I said, and I may, uh, my, my goal is to just do one through five, six through 10, 11 through 15, 16 through 20. But, you know, it just depends on, I feel I just may knock the other uh, 15 or so out uh, in one video after this, I don't know. So, and then I may also cut this down into just a single video by itself, the one through five, instead of, you know, the entire flipping off because some people just prefer to get to uh, the actual information um, again. So, so we'll play it by ear, you know, it's flexible. This is the internet, nothing professional about what I do, as you can tell, uh, just, just, I'm just talking to you, you know what I'm saying? Just telling you what I know about this biz. So again, um, uh, welcome to, um, welcome to this, uh, this week's uh, Flippinar and um, we'll get started. So before I go any further, I'll just uh, obviously want to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, but uh, my podcast, uh, the videos, I'm trying to upload as many as possible um, to iTunes. If you have an Apple product, iPhone, iPad, or whatever, you can uh, download the, the podcast. Just do a search for my name, Flipman, and you should be able to find uh, my particular podcast. So. With a podcast, you don't need internet access. Once you download it, you may need internet to download it. But once it's on your device, you can listen to it wherever. You know what I'm saying? As long as you got battery power and, and can hear it. So, again, so you can uh, access uh, my videos on podcasts. So just to get a disclaimer out of the way, most people know you're not going to make $10,000 if you don't do anything. But we have to say that. So. Again, uh, take advantage of my 200 plus videos on YouTube. Simply subscribe to the channel. Um, make sure you turn on the notifications so you are alerted whenever uh, new videos are um, new. New videos are um, yeah. I'm have to put somebody in time out here. They're trying to promote something on my stuff, it's cool, but you know what I'm saying, don't, you know, let's be real about this. I'm looking in the chat, somebody asked me they want to make a thousand or two thousand dollars a week, you know, come on now. But uh, anyway, so, um, so uh, uh, they got me off track there. So you can follow me on Instagram, follow me on, um, on Twitter, you see the handles there. And again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You want a copy of the free contract that I've used for 14 plus years, people, students, non-students have used it all over the country, just a simple one page contract to get the job done on most single family properties. Text the word contract to 313131. Don't text me, text the word contract uh, to that number. No area code is needed, just those six digits, 313131. All right, uh, training, uh, if you want me to come to your city, hey, uh, just land it. <laughs> that is available. If you want that option, you can call or text me about the freight, the 
fee, what it costs. You see my number here at the bottom left of the screen, 205-492-3425. Uh, for you podcasters, make sure, you know, I didn't even know this. I guess I hadn't watched a podcast in a long time. But the way I have mine set up, you can not only listen to it, you can actually see the video or whatever. So if that's of interest to you, instead of just listening to my voice, or you want to see my ugly mug, that is an option on the podcast. If you're interested in commercial real estate, flip this building.com, uh, focusing on triple net uh, opportunities, vacant or occupied low competition you can do it virtually basically sitting at home someone just text me about virtual wholesaling on houses you want a virtual wholesale commercially where you want to be there's a sea of opportunity because you can target the entire country no cash or credit needed and obviously you know what's up with the paydays my goal here tonight is is whether you know everything about real estate or you don't know anything about it my goal here tonight is to introduce you to the wonderful world of wholesaling, houses mainly, but you can say real estate in general. So what is wholesaling houses? It's a form of flipping houses, except the time frame is much shorter and no repairs are made to the house before the property is purchased. A wholesaler enters a purchase and sales agreement with a seller and then assigns the contract to a cash buyer for a hefty assignment fee. Here's an actual example. You see the house here to the right. Obviously, it appears to be distressed just from the lawn or lack of lawn care. In this example, we're going to assume that this house in excellent condition would appraise for $100,000. Okay, so for whatever reason, we can get this house under contract with the actual owner, the seller of this property, for $30,000. So what would be a reason? You know, divorce, loss of job, uh, medical bills, tired of being a landlord, relocation, kid going off to college, um, bad business deal, too many repairs. It can go on and on on why someone would be motivated to sell uh, this property at 30. Now they couldn't sell it at 100 because it's not in a condition to sell it at 100. But anyway, so they're gonna sell it at 30. So that's contract A. So once you have it on the contract, you market the property, whether you have buyers or you don't, you market the property, at $45,000. One buyer steps forward, said, hey, I can't, after they've taken a look at the video that you should have recorded and uploaded to YouTube, sent it out, sent a text or emailed out the link to uh, interested buyers. This one buyer, he goes out to take a look at the property and he steps forward and says, hey, I can't do 45, will you accept 41? My answer is gonna be yes, because I'm gonna get the difference between contract A with the seller and con and the, uh, the difference of contract B with the buyer. So the seller gets that $30,000 at closing, you get yours, which is $11,000, and the buyer takes possession of the house. Boom, there's your deal, $11,000 uh, assignment fee. So Yaska says, this is something that you should be doing. Well, uh, here are a couple of examples. Here's a Dallas student, the most recent video that I released Monday, morning that uh, you can still take advantage of and view if you want to. Um, he gave, I had to ask him because we didn't mention it during the, um, uh, during the actual interview on uh, what he did as for his earnest money. He told me he gave him a dollar. Uh, but uh, long story short, he ended up making $11,000. Well, actually he made 10,000, gave the uh, bird dog or the other wholesaler that referred the deal to him $1,000 for the referral. We're just gonna base it on the $11,000 transaction. If you just base that on return on investment with a $1 uh, a basically investment and $11,000 return, the, it, the ROI, the return on investment is over a million percent. Uh, One million percent, that's obviously mind boggling. Here's another example. Uh, this is a California a YouTube subscriber. He's not an actual student. Uh, he gave him a, a $10 earnest money deposit, and uh, the total transaction was $21,500 that he made. He had to split that with a partner, but the total deal was $21,500, which was their assignment fee. Their return on investment, their ROI, was over 200,000%. Another example here, which all of these, you can watch these videos. Just going back, you, can, you see the title here. All you have to do is just do a search for that. 
You see the title here, all you have to do is just do a search for that. Okay, and then we have a man here, Vic in Baltimore, which was a student, $1 EMD, earnest money deposit, and a $32,000 payday with a ROI of over 3 million percent. So do you just ask yourself, is this something you should be doing? Well, just to tell you a little bit about me, who I am, uh, is this your first introduction? For you old heads, you know, go ahead and uh, bear with me. I, but I feel I have to go through this because a lot of times people find these videos and this is their first introduction to me. So I just like to tell my story because I don't think that I'm nothing special. I've just taken action on some very old information. So here is how it went for me. I'm an entrepreneur first. I like to preface that. Real estate is just one of a couple of ways I've ever made any significant amount of money. So I'm not one of these one, but I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm not, I didn't just was born a born entrepreneur. I was someone that it came along late for me. So at seven, eight, nine years old, I didn't care about that. As a teenager, I didn't care anything about that. Didn't even know about owning a, your own business world. I, you know, a country boy walking around barefooted in a small town in South Alabama. All the thing we cared about was basketball and chasing and chasing girls. So Fast forward to college, um, I'm not even sure what uh, interested made me interested in entrepreneurship. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just not sure. Just the light went off some kind of way. I'm not sure. It probably was a combination of things. But anyway, the first one of the first and most significant things that I tried to do was I had the brilliant idea that I would take some of my student loan money and start a a, uh, a used car dealership and become a millionaire and have a story to tell. Well, uh, <laughs> I got a license, a dealer's license, and um, started going to actual dealer's auctions. What you should know, if you don't know about that business, if you're not mechanically inclined or you have someone that is, you will get you will lose money. Let me just say that. I'm gonna say something there, but you you're gonna lose money. That was me. I lasted about a year. I basically broke even on all the cars. That's what kept me going that long. Uh, I don't think I ever really lost any money of any significance, but I wasn't making any either. You know, so but I finally realized what my issue was. I really knew what it was, but I thought I could still uh basically get lucky. But anyway, long story short, I was out of that. So fast forward to 1995 and I uh, went to Daytona Beach, uh, Black uh, Spring Break Weekend or whatever it was called or whatever it is called. And my brother, uh, two of my cousins and one of my brother's close friend, closest friends, we all loaded up in a camera and we drove from Mobile, Alabama to Daytona Beach. And uh, one of my brother's friends from date uh, from uh, uh, Orlando uh, drove up to meet us, and uh, he was discussing what he did for a living. And he had a mobile car wash business where he basically uh, went on site to wash people's cars. So I thought it was brilliant, a genius, in fact. And so I couldn't wait to get back to Birmingham. So I invested in a uh, a baby blue. Uh, passenger van that where the seats had been taken out, bought a 100 gallon water tank and a pressure washer along with a promotional sign whenever we were on location and we were, I was in business. So my cousin and a childhood friend, that spring and summer of 95, we were out there getting it. Barbershops, hair salons, places, places of employment of people I knew, we were out there getting it. One problem, it does get cooler here Maybe not like in some other parts of the country, but once it started, you waking it up and it's 40, waking up in the morning, it's 40 degrees, 50, and that may be the high for the day. Uh, cold water just wasn't going to miss mix with this, this, this Southern <laughs> black guy. So I was out of that business. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I know when to fold my tent. So fumbling around over the next few years with some multi-level marketing stuff, I'm not a salesperson. I'm horrible at it. It may, it may seem like I like to deal with people or whatever. I'm sitting in this, I'm sitting here by myself right now to be different 
if I was sitting uh, talking to however many people are watching right now, I probably couldn't pull it off or whatever. But so anyway, so um, fast forward to 2002, a friend of mine and his now wife were going to school to become real estate agents. And the guy that normally taught the class wasn't there. Uh, the guy that substituted for him, uh, he didn't talk about being an agent. He talked about um, investing in real estate and creative ways of investing in real estate. So my uh, friend told me some of the things that he was discussing because he knows, you know, I'm, and he knows how I am. I'm an entrepreneur or whatever. So I that was in October of 2002. I didn't act on it at that time. So fast forward to December, actually 27th, it's a couple of days after Christmas, I was at my mom's house and I was up early that morning waiting on her to prepare uh, breakfast, my favorite, syrup and biscuits. I don't even have to have meat with, them, you know, especially, you know, even back then or even now, but um, that was my, that is my favorite. But so while waiting on her, uh, I was watching TV and up really early. So back then, Carlton Sheets, uh, was still in rotation as an infomercial. Carter, she's no money down program. So I caught one of the uh, infomercials about halfway through it, and I had seen them over the years. And it's not like they actually give you information that would be useful, just all promotional. Carter may help me make this much money. Carter help me make this much money. So it's not telling you anything. And so uh, I just went up the dial because my friend had, you know, mentioned some of the stuff from a couple of months earlier and, and watched it from beginning to end. Again, it don't, it doesn't tell you anything. It's just all promo stuff. You know, I made this much money. That much. Yeah, how, you made the money, but how did you make the money? And that's one of the reasons I teach the way I do versus what else may be out there is that I'm just I'm not going to tell you how much money I make. I'm going to tell you how the money is made. So, but anyway, just sitting there, I thought to myself, is he can't be lying about all of this. So back then my mom didn't have internet, so I waited till I got back to Birmingham and I did a search on this um, uh, message board, this entrepreneur message board I used to frequent and I asked the question, does Carlton Sheets program really work? And only one person replied, yes it does, which just changed my life financially. Yes it does, but Ron Legrand's course is better. So I did a search for Ron's course, and I saw it was for $1,500 back then. That was about 15 years ago. And wow, I, you know, it, I barely made more than that in a month, you know, on the job that I had at that time. So what they had on the site was a condensed version of it for, um, for $69.99, 80 bucks, which, like $80 with shipping. So I ordered that. It was in cassette tape form, so you know how long ago that's been. And I listened to it, and the only thing it did was let me know that, hey, this is something that I really need to be doing. Um, it, it was just a teaser, a lot of teasers. So I made up in my mind, in my mind if I had to get a second job, I would, and uh, to save that $1,500 for the full course. A couple of days later, I thought about eBay, and I did a, uh, a search for his name, and bam, there were a couple of auctions there for on that, those exact courses. So I bid it on one of the auctions, lost the auction, and uh, the guy that was running the auction uh, contacted me. Back then, you could do that with eBay, that was 15 years ago, so they don't, the security is a lot different now. And uh, asked me that I wanted a bootleg copy or burnt CD version of the, uh, of the courses. And yeah, so we agreed upon $400. That was a sacrifice. Something didn't get paid, I'm sure, uh, but I just felt I needed I, you know, I, I just felt that this was it. So I got the courses and boom, man, it was just going from not knowing anything, just a sea of information. Uh, wholesaling houses, lease options, uh, subject twos, uh, flipping, which is retailing, you know, buy, fix, and flip. Um, another model was called for sale by owner. And uh, wow, I was just blown away with the information. It took me about three weeks to go through it all. We know we're still working and what I was eating and sleeping it. I was listening to it before I went to work, on my split shift, before I went to bed. So I was on information overload, but if I didn't get anything out of it, what attracted me the most was wholesaling houses. 
The second thing is that I could put out bandit signs. I didn't have to actually reach out to people. If I put out enough marketing, people would call me. And the, and the third thing was lease options. So, um, so I, I bought bandit signs. I overpaid for those. I spent two hundred and fifty dollars on fifty signs. You know, I didn't know any better back then. But you know, so um, I got those on a Friday and I put them out on a Sunday morning. Uh, and that Monday, the very first two calls I received, they were both deals. Um, that's the way it happened for me. Most people are not that fortunate. But uh, the first one was a, a lease option opportunity, and the second was a wholesale op opportunity. So on the lease option opportunity, seller, his mom left him a house. She passed away. It still had a mortgage. He didn't live in the house. The house that he lived in had a mortgage. He couldn't afford two mortgages. So he contacted me and he wanted me to solve his problem. So the house, uh, he owed too much for it to be a, a wholesale deal and it needed some minor repairs on top of that, but it was livable. So I explained to him that I couldn't pay cash for it, but if he was willing, we could do a lease option uh, deal. And I explained to him that I would take over the payments, I'd place a tenant in there, the tenant would basically be making the payment and they would pay me probably a couple hundred dollars more, more than what the mortgage payment is for, along with the down payment that's non-refundable that goes 100% into my pocket. He was cool with that. He just wanted the relief of not paying uh, two mortgages. So, advertised the property, and this lady stepped forward, and she wanted to move her family. She thought the house was just a, a dream or whatever. It wasn't that great of a neighborhood, but she thought it was a dream. And I always tell you what I learned when I first got in this business, every house is a step up for someone. You can't get into, you only want to do deals where you where you live. You can do whatever you want to. I'm just telling you, leave a lot of money on the table. So uh, anyway, so the lady gave me $5,100 bill. That's five grand. Uh, sitting in the old Charlie's on uh, uh, Parkway East in the Roebuck area, Birmingham. People that no, my Birmingham, know that area. It's not there anymore. But anyway, so I was blown away. Um, I could have stopped then because I had failed at so many other businesses. Okay, so just to continue how this went down, because it's not a happy ending. <laughs> um, the house needed a few repairs, and the guy that actually owned the property he was a handyman. So trying to create a win-win, I suggested to the tenant buyer that uh, the guy did repairs and he could, you know, if she wanted me to, I'll see if he would be interested. So yeah, he was definitely interested because he needed the extra money. So uh, on top of that, he wanted to refinance his house because his pay thought his payment was too much, the house that he lived in. So a friend of mine, because I was still working then, did mortgages on the side. Uh, so created another win-win. I hooked those two up together. And so uh, my friend, I'd share with him that the lady had already given me five grand uh, down on the property. So he let, he, he told the seller not to be hating on me. He just was talking, you know, just making conversation. So the seller really got upset. I mean, guess he was having financial troubles or whatever, scoundrel anyway, regardless. And he felt that if he didn't get half of that money, he, would, he deserved all of that money because that was his house, even though I explained to him how the deal was going to work. So when he was supposed to have met the lady at the house, he met her there and cussed the lady out, told her to get off his property. Tyrone did not own it, and he was going to call the police if she didn't leave. So the lady called me screaming uh, and crying, uh, upset, of course, because she thought she had been scammed. And so... Uh, I told her uh, where, you know, I found out where she was at right then, and uh, I would bring her her money, even though I had already spent $700 of it. You know, and that was, I don't even know how I came up with it, but I did. So I brought her, uh, carried her money, and in the conversation with my friend that was trying to do the guy's mortgage, uh, my friend told me that the guy was an actual a pastor, a minister. I was like, wow, this, 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 this guy is a minister? And so he and I called him, you know, just to give him a piece of my mind. He was glad to give me a piece of his. And we went back and forth. I made some insulting con uh, uh, comment about him being a pastor. And uh, his last comment to me, if I ever see you again, it won't be pretty or something to that effect. So boom. 
that ended that. That deal blew up in my face. I could have easily given up then, like this crap does not work. Well, fortunately, I had another deal in the mix. These two sisters, uh, their mom passed, left them a house, similar situation, but the house, what did it? They didn't owe anything on that house. Uh, like a lot of people, we're not going to sell mom's house, you know, too many memories, blah, blah, blah. And uh, But after renting to uh, relatives, friends, or family, uh, you get burnt out because they'll start to count your money and they won't pay you. Those are the worst people to rent to in comparison. Uh, so they were ready to and they were motivated to sell. That's why I, I encourage my students and non-students to, if you don't have money to invest in uh, banded signs uh, and or direct mail or in, uh, internet marketing or whatever as far as social media, then you need to be targeting landlords because a lot of those people are very motivated. That's going to be, once you get your marketing in play, that's going to be your number one and all the different reasons people be motivated to sell, tired landlords is going to probably be number one. Okay, so anyway, so uh, we agreed upon $20,000. I'm not even sure how I knew that was a great deal, but that's the price that we agreed upon. And so um, I met them, uh, went to their house, and I got, something, I got something for you guys this week. Boom, somebody sent me this. I showed up in my 1985 Toyota Celica convertible. This was in 2003, so this was an 18-year-old car. The roof leaked, of course, you didn't know that unless you were riding with me when it was raining. And uh, they actually thought I had the money with me. You know what I'm saying? I guess I sounded like I had money. I didn't look like it. I probably still don't look like it. Uh, but... This is what I showed up in. Man, I love that car. But I wanted to share that. Somebody sent that to me um, probably two weeks ago, and I'm really happy they did. I guess I could have Googled it and found a picture of myself. But, man, ain't that a, ain't that a beauty? Uh, ain't that a beauty? But anyway, so um, showed up in my 85 Celica convertible, and uh, uh, they actually thought I had the money with them, so I explained to them it didn't work that way. So anyway, we put it in the contract. I advertised the property, a realtor called me, say he had a, a client that buys in that area. I explained to him that I was a wholesaler, which was a rookie mistake, um, to the realtor anyway. And so he said, yeah, they'll, he'll pay 25 for it, but I need to get half of that. You know, half of that 5,000 you're gonna make. So I agreed to it, uh, pigs get fled, fed, hogs get slaughtered, don't be greedy. So anyway, so I met them in a uh, shopping center parking lot. They gave me a $500 earnest money. 10 days later, we closed the deal. Boom, the seller was happy that I made money on this deal. Taylor, what did you get? Just, just happy that I made money, solved their problem. So that was my first deal, 2,500 uh, bucks. As you can tell, I'm no smarter than you are. Where I live is no better. The only, made, the only thing that may be different outside of my 1985 Toyota seller here is that I took action, right? Uh, I just taken some very old information and put it into and put it into motion. So, as many of you all know, the hard way, most of us, we think we need a lot of money to start. That that's always that prevented me from even being interested in um, um, uh, in real estate, and uh, thinking uh, you need a real estate license. Waiting to hear that you waiting till you figure it all out. Wasting uh, a lot of people are readers. I'm not. But from what I understand, there are very few books. I don't even know of a book that I could recommend that's going to give you everything from A to Z. Most of them are just upsells. Not hating. It is what it is. Uh, a lot of people are tired of uh, their job. They don't like what they do. Um, I didn't hate my job. I just knew it wouldn't provide me what I wanted. Uh, taking a pointless business class. I went to college. Uh, I wouldn't give anything for it. Uh, but... Uh, I don't think it benefit me as far as being able to provide the living that I want. But it may be more on me than college, but I think it's more college. Going to seminars, um, I get at least two, three calls a week or text messages of people saying, hey, I just left a seminar and I did some research and found you. <laughs> but they've already spent money. So when they get to me, they might want me to do something where they don't spend money. I, I had that option, 
those 200 plus free videos. But if you're going to deal directly with me, then yeah, that's going to be some freight there. So uh, I've been thinking about doing a video on uh, what you should look out for when you, when you go to seminars, what you, you should be looking for or what you should be paying for, in my opinion. Anyway, so I don't know if I'll do that. But anyway, so uh, and then information overload, as I mentioned before. So uh, all of us have experienced these things. So we're going to go ahead and get into why you're here. Top top 20 frequently asked questions by newbies about wholesaling houses. I should have titled this a little differently. It should have been the top 20, the, 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 the top 20 most frequently asked questions by newbies about wholesaling houses. That's what it should have been. Top 20 most frequently asked questions by newbies about wholesaling houses. I'm only going to do one through five tonight, as I mentioned. And then I'll make a decision if I'll do, you know, just four weeks of this or whatever, but I'm not sure. So we'll see. You know, I don't want to lock myself into this. So I'll let you guys help me determine that if you uh, find this to be useful. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right. Um, question number one. I think I've already answered it, but I'll try to break it down a little more. Um, I try to, well, I can only explain stuff the way I understand it. So hopefully it comes across uh, clear and simple. But uh, what is wholesaling houses or real estate? Basically, what you're doing is understanding the power of a purchase and sales agreement, a contract. All real estate transactions start with that. So what that offers you is an opportunity to, to provide some form of control if the terms will allow within that contract. So once you gain that temporary control, not that you own the property, but you own the sale of the property, can't anything happen until either your contract is executed or it expires legally. So if someone comes along, cash buyer, and wants to basically buy your position then that's possible. But in order to have or be able to set yourself up in that position, you need a motivated seller. And that's someone that wants to sell at a significant discount based on repairs, what you would like to make, and what the house will obviously appraise for in excellent condition. So you need the contract, a motivated seller, and then a cash buyer that produces a wholesale transaction. That can be on houses, that can be on land, that can be on commercial. Now commercial, you don't need a cash buyer, lending can be involved. It's not as complicated as it is with single family because with single family, you get HUD involved and they try to protect, protect the consumer, whereas commercial is normal B2B, you know, by, uh, business to business. So you don't get the feds so much involved in how the transaction or how the lending is uh, is performed. So that's what is wholesaling. It's basically understanding, taking a contract, controlling it long enough as for the sale of it, and someone basically buying you or, or buying you buying your position within the deal. That's a cash buyer, and that's done either through an assignment of contract or a double close, which assignments is my preference. All right, number two, is wholesaling houses illegal? I need to do a video just on that, but this is number two. All right, what confuses people is two things, is that they will contact an agent, they will contact an attorney, they will contact a um, title company, and they'll try to explain wholesaling to whoever they're speaking with. Your first mistake is, is that you're assuming they even know what you're talking about. That's the first mistake. All right. The other thing is, it sounds just like being a real estate agent, which you do need a license for. So 
the reason you don't need a license to wholesale and you do need a license to be an agent is that a real estate agent they are they are either helping someone to find a, a piece of real estate to buy or they're trying to help someone to sell a piece of real estate sometimes they may be you know doing both duties with an individual therefore they don't have an actual purchase and sales agreement on the property they're acting as an agent for that individual or rep, uh, they're representing that seller or buyer that's why they need a license as a wholesaler once you interject yourself into the deal with the purchase and sales agreement that's why you don't need a license all right because nothing prevents you legally from taking that contract and assigning it over to an actual buyer a cash buyer of that particular property unless that contract states that you can assign it if it doesn't state that, then you're fine. Say, but even if it is stated that you can't assign it, there's always the possibility of double closing it if cash is involved. Okay, so the other thing is what makes wholesaling legal is because cash is being used, you're not under the guidelines of lending when you're dealing with HUD and all the lending parameters that are put in place to. I guess protect the consumer, the buyer or the seller. So when cash is involved, all that goes out the window. And the other thing was I should have bullet pointed that is that in most cases you're buying these properties as is. But the main thing is, is that the separation between you and the agent, because it sounds like you are an agent when you explain to someone, because you're basically finding a great deal with the seller and then you're finding a buyer for it because you're never actually closing on it. To someone that doesn't know anything about wholesaling, that sounds like an agent. The difference is, is that contract, that separates you. And that also allows you not to be limited on the amount of money that you can actually make on the property. Now, I'm not an attorney, but I've been advised by attorneys. And at the end of the day, after all that I just said, the same attorneys, the same title companies, maybe not all of them, but enough, closing the same deal with you or will close with you that close with these same agents. They are not putting their livelihoods in jeopardy just for you. Now, the ones that don't understand it, and uh, that's, that's up to their discretion, but trust me, if you got a buyer and you got a seller in place, and I don't like to use the word easy and explaining none of this stuff, but sometimes it's warranted, it's easy to get your deal closed. So that's why I tell students don't even worry about it. Worry about that deal, finding a great deal, you will get it closed. It's just that simple. That's number two. Number three, do I need a real estate license? So basically, I've somewhat answered the question already with number two, but to answer the question, no, you don't. All right, now, I've never even thought about getting a license because I didn't even want to study for it. <laughs> so it might be just, <laughs> one of my friends is, uh, he's a financial advisor, he's just in the financial industry and he's selling, studying for, I think it's called a Series 65. Uh, he explained to me what it does. I think it uh, allows you to, um, to do options and all that stuff for people or whatever, charge fees or whatever. So I'm not sure he broke it down to me, but um, I told him, I said, man, you're amazing because I can't pass anything. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, yes, you will because you so, I am entering that kind of stuff. But he said, you're interested. I said, no, that's different than trying to study to because all that's doing is just, in most cases, like with a real estate life, a lot of it is just legal dirt to protect yourself more so than educating you about the business part of it. So if it's not that, I'm not, it's going to be difficult for me to, to grasp it and learn it. If it's not actually just telling me how to make the money, being an agent, it doesn't go into that. It, take, it, it gets into the laws and what you're not supposed to do, what you can do. Okay, I need that, but if it doesn't tell me about how to make the money, I don't want to listen to it. That's why motivation of speaking doesn't attract me if they're not telling me how to make the money. I got the mindset because 
I don't, I, I don't want a star. And the people I care about, I don't want a star. So I don't need mindset whipping in the shape. I need you to tell me how to make the money. So get out of my soapbox on that. But so do I need a real estate license? The pros are, all right, you will have access to MLS. And years ago, that was even, that was really a huge advantage. But nowadays, it's not that big of a advantage. Maybe, maybe a slight advantage, um, but it's the same information for the most part that's on, um, uh, on MLS. You can get through all the free sites like uh, uh, Zillow, uh, Trulia, um, HomeSnap, Realtor.com, uh, Homes. Now, uh, now, obviously, uh, MLS can give you that CMA, but it's, it's still just so much free information out there that you can do your business without having, you know, having that access. So if that's the pro of having access to MLS, if that's worth you going through all that or whatever, then so be it. I'm just telling you, you don't need it to run your business. You know, this is not brain surgery. So that's really the only pro that I say. I guess the other pro could be, I guess this could be a pro. I'm um, just being real, uh, is that properties that wouldn't normally be a deal um, for you as a wholesale transaction, you could transition those into listings. But I'm not sure how that works legal because I don't think you can advertise like that. We buy houses and then transition. So I'm not sure about the legalities of that, but I guess it could be done a different way or whatever, even if you just uh you you were working with a team or something so I, I don't know i don't know how that works so i would assume you could transition in some kind of way within the parameters of, of your license all right so those are the prom pros now the cons are if, if let me just say this because I, I i don't want to seem like i'm hating on this but i just don't think you need it you know you can get it if you want to but as for the need no uh but the cons are obviously you have to disclose that you're a realtor on any transactions you do a lot of agents think they can't even do their own personal investing. That's how it work. Or the brokers have their minds. Or, yeah, you can buy your own houses. They can't prevent you from buying your own house. You just have to disclose you're an agent. You know, and that's wholesaling. They just have to disclose that you are with the seller. That's it. You know, you can do your own investing. They, they, they can't lock you into that, that everything you do, they make money off of. If you do a listing, then, yeah, they the broker, is, you signed up to give him a share of your money. Oh, I forgot, you know, so, um, but they can't block that. So, and then, um, you know, being an agent, unless you're a broker, it's a form of pimping in my mind. <laughs> in my mind, I, I, you know, um, everything you do, they're going to take a share of it. You know, so I, I, I'll share, but I don't want you to be locked on. Just, I'm putting in the effort, but you're getting a piece of it regardless. I, that don't that doesn't sit well with me. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so that's one of the other cons. Um, and the the span that you're an agent all the time, I think that's a con. Also, um, one of the negatives. I'm saying con, but one of the negatives. Um, what else? Uh, obviously, the, the the classes and going through all that stuff. That just me. You know, some people they love to study and all this stuff. I, I can't stand it. Um, but um, so. So, but to answer your question on it, do I need a real, I'm rambling now, do I need a real estate license? No, you don't. You know, if you want one, fine. But to answer the question, no, you do not need a license to host your house. All right. I think I got all the plates here. All right. So, number four. All right. Um, should I have a list of buyers first? All right. Uh, obviously, this is a huge debate. You know, both work. You can build a buyer's list first if you want to before you get started. Uh, I was taught, and I teach it this way. And 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 and, when, and I know I'm a, I'm a bear receptor, and I understand. But I I get I get probably once a month, maybe not even that much, maybe once every couple of months. I can tell somebody's been to a seminar and they told me to build their buyers list and they'll call someone and you can tell that they're reading the script. And so I'll just cut them, you know, I say, hey, man, I said, I understand what you're going through. I said, but um, 
I, I don't, don't want to go through these questions. If you got a deal, just send it to me. You know, I just go ahead and cut them off, but nicely. You ain't going to get that from everybody. So I, I try to prevent, when I teach them, when I'm teaching my students, I try, I try to do that. I don't know if I'm successful always, is to try to prevent you from being discouraged in stuff that you do. Because you can call, that's like when you call the title company and agents and uh, 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 attorneys and ask them these questions. They can be so discouraging, even with cash buyers. If you don't have anything to offer them, they, you know, some of them will be receptive because this is similar to me. They just don't want to handle people like that. But then you can get this dude that's a real a-hole on the phone, and he don't want to talk. He doesn't want to touch because you don't have anything to offer them. I, I can guarantee that same person, if you call him back and you got a house that's worth 150 ARV fixed up in excellent condition, but you got you tell him he can get it for for eighty five. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the whole conversation is going to be different. So if you're going to choose one or the other, I'm going to say just focus on great deals and you can build a buyer's list. But when I what I mean by what do you have to offer when you're calling these people just to hold a conversation again, it's going to all depend on the individual. But I think. Um, it can be discouraging if you get the wrong person on the phone and everybody's not built for that. I know I'm not. So, uh, again, I try to, I try to, uh, to encourage students, don't even worry about that part of it, to just wait on a great deal. Um, focus on the harder part of it. Sellers are harder. Um, finding a great deal is hard. But once you have one, baby, hey, it, it, it's showtime. It's time to get paid. So, that's where you spend all of your, your energy. So, and I have the 50K bag example. I'm not even going to go through it. I think you all have heard it enough or whatever. Uh, but the point is, it's not difficult to give away money. You know, if you want to hear the $50,000 50, bag example, you can go through some of my other flipping ours on it. So, should I have a, a list of buyers first? Uh, no, in my opinion. Now, both work. You can do it that way if you want to. And I know people are nervous. If I don't have a buyer and I put a house on the contract, blah, blah, blah. But see, what you don't understand is you can have a buyer. This is a guy can tell you, hey, I buy houses, uh, three twos in this area, anything over 75, under 75,000, I want it, blah, blah. You call them. You got exactly what they wanted. Ah, uh, this is not a good time for me right now, blah, blah, blah. I got 10 houses. I can't move. You know, so, so now what? You're still in the same position that you thought you were not. You were going to be in uh, because you didn't so-called have a buyer ready to go. Now, buyers, this is important, but you always want to negotiate your deals just like you do not have a buyer because you don't want to be dependent on a list and you don't want to be definitely dependent on one buyer. You know, so that buyer doesn't want it, you move on. You know, so you're going, to, you're going to negotiate your deals like you don't know anybody that has cash to buy it. That, in my mind, I don't know about you, but that keeps me – negotiating the most attractive deals possible because the, the, the because I don't know what someone's willing to pay. So I try to get as cheap as possible. Uh, and we roll from there. Now, some of it's just going to be trial and error for your market, especially when you're starting out. You know, there's no way to know. So anyway, so boom. Should I have a list of buyers first? No. That's question number four. All right. Uh, question number five on the top 20 most Frequently asked questions by newbies about wholesaling houses. Do I tell the seller I'm a wholesaler? No, you do not. Who are you? You are a cash buyer. Doesn't matter where the cash comes from. You buy as is and you close in two to four weeks and you pay all closing costs minus any unpaid taxes, mortgages, or liens. That's who you are. That will answer 98% of their questions. Again, who are you? You are a cash buyer. You buy as is. You will close in two to four weeks and you pay all closing costs minus any unpaid taxes, mortgages, or liens. All right? Sellers do not care because the seller, seller gets what they want out of the deal. You will always, and if you do enough deals, we're running to an idiot, right? You can't prevent, just, there's no such thing as perfection. 
out of 14 plus years of doing this, I've only run into one idiot and we still closed the deal, but she was just being greedy, you know, even though we had already paid her. So, um, again, um, So um, every and then the most the most uh, important thing is that everyone's happy on closing day. If you're having trouble viewing me, please let me know. Uh, I can see it here on my screen. I'm good on my uh, iPad or whatever. So, but again, so um, there you go. Do I tell the seller I'm a wholesaler? No, you do not. It's not important. And the other thing is, like, I'm I'm glad I already read that is that just like you're trying to learn wholesaling, you probably have spent hours trying to do so. Imagine trying to explain wholesaling to a seller in five minutes. They're not gonna to wanna to do business with you. You know why? Because it's not important, guys. It's not important. So those are the first five of the top 20 most frequently asked questions by newbies about wholesaling houses. But I will get to the question answering period right now. Exactly uh, seven o'clock where I'm located. Uh, someone says um, summer AFS, um, which is better to start with residential or commercial? Just depends on you. Um, how fast do you need money? Um, residential is gonna be faster paydays in most cases, so um, uh, that, that's going to depend on you um, because you're going to have the speed of a um, single family and then you're going to have the, um, the larger paydays for a commercial. All right, let me see here. M. Sidho is searching for pre-foreclosures, pre-foreclosure owners, a good idea starting out wholesaling. Very tough way to do this business, to start out. You have to remember, um, you have to go through a short sale process but that takes time. Obviously, people do it and make money with it. Don't get me wrong, but it's tough. And remember that uh, those people on that list and a lot of people are trying to contact them. And uh, if they stop paying their mortgage, they stop paying a lot of other bills. So they're not wanting to be reached by anyone. Um, was the market lucrative as it was before 2008? If not, is, the, is that why everybody has a book to sell, seeing things that turned around? Um, I, I still don't think it's as good as it was back then, um, but I don't know if it's for the reasons that it was better or not. It just, I think a lot more people, uh, it's just different. The lending is different. You know what? It had to be better back then because it was just so easy to get people financed. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's real estate, man. We have to live somewhere. Um, we have to house our businesses, places. So there's always going to be opportunities. You know, obviously I can tell the difference because, you know, I was doing it before then, but if someone just started out, you you wouldn't know the difference. And, and, and at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. It's still money to be made. You know, it's just going to always be money to be made. You just have to adjust with the times. Uh, Summer AFS says, um, okay, Eric is the name. Summer was the name of the, my, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, typical time for a commercial start to finish, it, it'll vary, man, but um, easily 60 to 120 days, could even be longer. Obviously, any deal can close in a short time frame, but on average, you know, it, but it, it takes time. Jim Tim said, I see Vegas Commercial uh, building for sale. How do you run numbers on it? Uh, depend on what type of building it is, man. Uh, it, it see, with commercial, there's so many ways you can go about it that, you just can't, that, that's just too vague of a question. Um, you'd have to have more more details on it to, to know uh, is there a potential deal there or not. You know, there's a lot of vacant commercial buildings. Um, a lot of times they're going to remain vacant just because the area that they're located in. So just too many factors to go into without knowing more information. Uh, Shaq Smith says, why is it not a good idea to tell a real estate agent you're a wholesaler? Number one, it's not important. Number two, they probably don't even know what you're talking about. If you watched the most recent video that I did with, uh, I dropped it Monday, so what would that date have been? The, uh, the 10th, 
uh, with um, it might it might say the ninth, but I actually released it on I uh, uploaded it on the on the on the ninth, and I think uh, I actually made it live on the tenth. But um, if you watch the video with um, with Reginald, he's been he would have been an agent for over ten years, and he just found about wholesaling, and that's, and that's most agents. So the, those are the main reasons because they're they're not gonna know what you're talking about. And they're gonna they're gonna get um, skeptical because they don't know what you're talking about, and they're supposed to be an expert. And if, but at the end of the day, it's not important. Uh, Gabby Loa, love the video. What do you think about the market in Dalton, Alabama? You know, smaller town, so obviously the opportunity is gonna be less. But um, you know, I, hey, same thing as I said before. Uh, the name of the game is a motivated seller. You know, that's that's the name of the game. And um, you'll find a cash buyer just, you're going to be limited just because the town is so small. Um, good evening, Flip. Uh, this is Lex Diamond, Diamonds. Uh, Lex Diamonds says, good evening, Flip. It is Lex from Dallas. Uh, Percentage-wise, how much would you say you spend on wholesaling versus other strategies? Um I'm not sure, I'm assuming you mean marketing. I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. If you could be a little more clear on that question, uh, Lex. Anthony Heron, greetings from Compton, California. Just like Compton. Okay, uh, Tyler Stewart. Um, all right, uh, Tyler said, I still don't understand how to wholesale a owner financing deal. Uh, what do you do if your buyer defaults are you stuck paying for the property? If you set up the terms and then assign uh, your position over, then you're out of it. You know, if, if you're gonna wholesale it, you know, if you're gonna remain in the deal, then yeah, you're responsible for uh, making those payments until you get a, another tenant, if I'm understanding you correctly. All right, Jim Tennant said he's surrounded by a outlet mall, Wendy's, uh, Brand Smart, and a lot of other restaurants. It's an old uh, King Kingdom buffet. Um, now, Wendy's, it, it, it would seem that it would need to be more than just when that's just one NT. Uh, that's in one national tenant, one national retailer. I normally like to see at least four or five, but assuming that there were four or five, just to answer your question, man. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously find the traffic count, the lot size, the size of the, the square footage of the building, uh, what are the triple net comps per square foot in the area. Um, most of the time you can get most of that from the broker if it's listed. Uh, as far as those triple net comps in the area, um, you just see what other properties are listed, uh, leasing for uh, in that general area within a few blocks, and that'll normally give you that number. It's gonna be a range normally, and that's when you can start to evaluate the property. Rodney Blewett uh, said, so what do you think about probate wholesaling? Um, probate, there's an opportunity there, nothing I've ever really focused on directly. Uh, whenever I do direct mail and it's absentee, that's automatically going to include um, probate opportunities. So uh, if you have the patience and the, uh, the time to research those and pursue them, yeah, there's going to be opportunity there. But, you know, just like with any, any form of, uh, uh, of niche or any particular niche or sellers that you're targeting, there's always gonna probably be opportunities that do you have the patience to go through a hundred of them before you get a deal? You know, that's that's the question you always have to ask yourself, is that uh, do you have that type of patience to do that? You know, and now the first one that you look up may be a deal, but I like to try to give you like worst case, you know, and a hundred may still not be worst case, but you know, normally most people can, wrap their minds around that type of research. Maya Jeffress, Jeffrey, what if you can't get information from the counter on the vacant property? Do you, do you then deal with the title company? When you say information, do you mean like the owner's uh, name? Because the tax bill has to go somewhere. If the title company has that information, normally that information is available at the county. With that being said, um, some counties, uh, the way they have their information available to the public and i think some states don't make it public like this i don't think there's a few of them though you just have to normally it's online uh if it isn't and a lot of times those sites are not user friendly so i would just go down there and just talk to someone until i speak to one and a lot of times those are uh, uh public employees what, what do you call them when they work for us 
uh, that we pay their salaries, whatever they're called, uh, a lot of times they're not the most useful individuals. So some of it's just the uh, luck of the draw. Am I getting someone that's going to be helped? Uh, but that's where I would start and see if I can find out how to access that online so I don't have to go down there every time I research a property. A lot of times they can tell you exactly where to go because they prefer you not to come down there and uh, just go online. So they may be helpful in that sense. Uh, Elijah Kennedy said, what's a good site for mailing postcards? Uh, click to mail, I guess would be a good one. Uh, go Big Printing is another. Um, I don't do postcards. I don't do my direct mail that way, but just to answer your question. And I don't teach it that way, but. Uh, Nicholas Loftus, what's the cheapest site for mail distribution of letters? I just answered that with the previous question. Uh, Johnson Boy says, what's the average percentage per deal? Percentage of what, Mr. Johnson Boys? Uh, T. Hoke says, what do you charge for your class? Simply text or call me, uh, or you can just go to flipman.net. I hate to quote it on this video because it will be viewed two years from now, more than likely, or longer. And, you know, I don't, you know, I don't like to put the prices out there because that stuff is going to change and actually going to change soon. So, um, so just, just, just text me, see what the current rate is, or you can go to the site. I normally keep that updated. Flipman.net. You see the handle in the background behind me. The, uh, the the website name. Mike in Atlanta uh, is wholesaling land the same as residential sales. It can be. Uh, two new stadiums are almost done being built in the A. So I think selling land would be good. Yes and no. Yeah, but man, that stuff. When you start talking about that kind of stuff, man, cats are so ahead of the game. That stuff so political, you know on that level. I, I, I understand your, your ambition, Mike, but it's so political on that level. That stuff is, most of that laying down by that stadium is already spoken for. Not discouraging, you might know, you might know something, you know what I'm saying? And you can always try, but I'm just letting you know that that's a serious hustle there on a whole nother level. And a lot of this stuff that, you know, not above board, uh, palms are being greased, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just a lot of, a lot of shades. And then a lot of times that stuff was in a development area like that. Um, it just, it, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it to you. Um, but, um, I, I know what you're thinking. Let me just say that. I know the, the opportunity is there, but and I don't like to discourage people because I would love for you to come here and say, hey, man, you were right. Yeah, it is, it is political, but I knew this, and I, and I put this property in the contract, and they had to come through me, and I made 350000 on this deal, just on the wholesale deal. I would love for you to come back and be able to tell us that. So, um, But, yeah, obviously it's going to be opportunity there because it's, that's obvious, the obvious, obvious development is going on there. So there's, there's tons of opportunity there. It's just a lot of time that stuff is so political who gets those deals on that level. You're talking about hundreds of million dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, well, billions. Uh, when you start talking about developing stadiums and everything going associated around it. All right. Uh, Nia 8 said, if you get a house on the contract, do you turn the utilities on before selling to make sure everything's working? Yes or no or why? Um, if you're wholesaling it, that, that's, that's no concern of you. That's up to your buyer. Normally, your buyers are seasoned, and they take that in consideration whenever they're making their offers is that, hey, the utility, there may be some issues with the plumbing or the, and or the electrical. So to answer your question, no, you don't. Um, <clears throat> not when you're wholesaling. Next down, so I says, I'm sorry, Flip, I meant by actually focusing on wholesale deals versus other real estate investing strategies, actual marketing, finding, clothing, wholesale deals. Well, with commercial, it's really a lot, not any marketing going on. It's just putting in the time and the lead work, which I've been lacking here lately. Um, but um, <clears throat> that that's where it, uh, that that's where that's where it, um, it, it it's different. It with, with commercial is just all it's just putting the time in. That, that that's what it um, uh, that's what that's what it that's what it just boils down to. Whereas with houses. Uh, to, for me, <clears throat> it's just all about marketing. 
or whatever. That that makes it easier for me. Now, some people can just do the research and reach out to sellers uh, or property owners, and, and they can do it that way. That way. So, um, Rich says, um, "Can we talk offline?" Um, yeah, you can. You can call me. That's fine. Um, I'll put my number out there. Uh, Candace Hawkins says, "Hello, everyone. Hello to you, Candace." You can you can let us know where you where you're where you're coming from where you are located if you want to, but hello to you, <clears throat> uh, Jeffrey. I'm not sure what you're saying yes to. You're gonna have to repeat the question. So I got a little lost here. Um, what we got? Uh, Gabe Lowry. How do I get the contracts that are required for wholesaling? Gabe, I hope you've been watching this entire flipinar. If you haven't. <laughs> I give away the contract that I use and it's worked all over the country. All you have to do is text the word contract to 313131 to get a copy of that contract. Um, Candace says, is your contract for double closing as well? It can be used for that. Yes, Candace. Uh, T. Hoke, uh, what site did you use for your signs? You, if you mean bandit signs, the company that I recommend because they give my students and non-students uh, a 5% discount is Dirt Cheap Signs. You don't want to go to the site and order. You only want to go to the site and get the phone number so you can call and speak to Curtis or Christina. Let them know that Ty referred you, and boom. Again, you always want to do your own due diligence but they, that'll be a good price uh, matching point that you can use based on um, uh, their pricing. So, um, yes, yeah, so, uh, summer, summer, summer AFs, uh, civil employees, yeah, they can be very helpful. A lot of them can be, you better get out of my face. <laughs> so, yeah, but civil employees, that's, that's the term I was looking for. All right. Uh, somebody said, what about a bank owned property? Is that worth pursuing? Um, well, yeah, you can do it. It's just, it's just a different process because a bank is not going to allow an assignment. In reality, you're either going to have to have the, 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 the funds, whether temporarily or whatever. You basically have to be able to buy the property first. So that eliminates wholesaling. Now, if you got a, the right type of buyer and they just want you to go out there and find a deal and they pay you, bam, you, you're good. I call them lazy buyers. You know, those are not that um, easy to find. So, um, but yeah, it can be done, but it's just a different process because who, who has ownership of it? All right. Uh, Jeffrey says, thank you. No problem. All right. Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, Johnson boy said so you would make uh, per what? I guess he said what percentage do you make per deal? It's not based on percentage, man. Somebody asked this question last week. It's a fear. If, it, if it's a hundred thousand dollar deal, I may make thirty grand on it. <laughs> you just so it's not a percentage, or I may make two grand on it. So um, it's just too many factors that go into it. That's why I can't just give somebody a percentage of what you should charge per deal because sometimes you may give up a lot for the future. I remember, um, uh, you know, I've done deals uh, where with, with one buyer, I made, I made 40 K on the deal. Then another deal I did where I made only 1500 on it, you know? So, um, you know, it, it just goes back and forth, you know? So, there's no percentage. It, it's just I, I, I can't. I can't even. I'm, I'm trying to come up with a way to help people to determine that amount, um, but it's just a feel. I don't. I don't even. I can't explain. I can't explain it. I can't wrap my mind around it. If somebody called me and say, "Hey, boom! I got this property on the contract. The repairs of this. They are VSD." I said, "Yeah, that's a deal." You say, "Well, what you will put it out there for?" And I'll just tell you. I just just write me, and I'll, I can tell you what I'll put it out there for. Now, the thing what you have to understand is that because you put a price out there, you have to be, you, or let me just say this, whenever you're selling, you're always going to ask for more than what you'll accept. And whenever you're buying, you're always going to offer less than what you'll pay. I hope that helps you understand, but you still have to price it 
where it's attractive to an actual buyer if you're trying to wholesale a property. You still have to price it that way where they still will be like, yeah, that's a no-brainer. They're still going to try to talk you down. That's what we do. That's what all, you know, business people do. We're still going to try to negotiate. It's rare people going to pay what you're asking, you know, unless unless it's just a very hot property. You just found a, just one of those all-timers, you know. So um, I, I know I was rambling, but that's just no one answer for that. Uh, is it legal or a good idea to live in an apartment building as the landlord? Yeah, you know, that's legal. Nothing prevents you from owning the building and living there. I probably wouldn't. If I did it, I wouldn't let them know that I was the landlord. I wouldn't let the people that live there know I was the landlord. Um, all right, Carl, the tactician, says, man called me yesterday for a deal on a duplex. He wants 29000 ARV. The ARV is at 70000 If if I'm on for 25K, if I, I guess I'm not sure what he means. And wholesaler for 30 plus, is that a good deal? Well, something like that uh, on a duplex, I would have to know is it rented? What's the condition? You know, things of that, those, those will factor in on what I will put it back out there for. And if it is rented for how much? <clears throat> what are the taxes and insurance uh, per year? You know, those, those are important factors to know if you have a potential deal there. All right. Uh, M. Sidho said, thanks. No problem. Um, Nicholas Lofter says, what was the response you give to sellers who actually you are? Um, as I went, that was one of the five frequently asked questions that I just answered. But to answer it again, I am a cash buyer. We buy as is, or I buy as is. We close in two to four weeks, and we pay all closing costs minus any unpaid taxes, mortgages, or liens. All right. Uh, Lex Diamond says again, um, what is your approach on a seller who needs to sell quick but has very little equity? Is there a way for me to profit on that? What would you offer? Wait a minute. A lease option or a pass on it? Um, if it's if it's an attractive property in a nice neighborhood, uh, yeah, that's a lease option opportunity there. You know, if you want to pursue those, um, most definitely. If the house is in you know good shape and it's in a, an attractive neighborhood, desirable neighborhood, yeah, that's an opportunity there. Um, Danlin says, do you have the apartment deal still? Nothing is available right now. Uh, Summer AFS says, are there any tax benefits that come in with the investing in real estate? Uh, yeah, there can be. Um, that's, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it could be tax benefits. The main tax benefit is I want to make as much money as I could possibly make. And people say, do you have to pay taxes on that? Of course you do. It's income. You know, but would you rather pay taxes on zero or a couple hundred thousand dollars? All right. Um, Anthony Steiner, when I say zero, you didn't make anything. That's what I mean. I was going to pay zero taxes, but you know what I mean? You, you didn't make anything, zero, versus I made $200,000 and I had to pay X percentage of that. You know, that's, that's an easy answer for me. Um, but I know what you mean, tax benefits. That more comes into holding properties, what you may get off the interest, depreciation, you know, but seek out a CPA on that side of it. That, but that's more when you're holding on two properties. Um, ownership. Uh, Anthony says, hey, Flip, do you suggest I get an LLC before I start the business? Um, it's not needed to start. At some point, you need to. If you're on a limited budget, put that on the back burner. All right, I'm about to round this up. I'm gonna answer a couple more guys. I really appreciate everyone that has showed up so far. Um, do you always use YouTube videos to show your buyers? Always, if they always. It's, it's free. It's simple technology. It's free. Yes, always. And I've been doing that for years. Neil said just to make sure the utilities work. Yeah, again, Neil, yeah, that that that's up to your buyer. Um, that if you're trying to buy it yourself, obviously you want to do that. 
or whatever if you're not seasoned. But again, they take that into consideration whenever they make their offers that nothing is worth it. Um, it's just a bonus. So, all right, um, answer a couple of more here. Try to round it up in an hour and 30. Um, Amina Lowry says, hey, Mr. Ty, do the banks have any say-so over where a seller can contract the house over to someone else? I'm not sure what you mean. They can't, pre I'm assuming you mean, can they prevent you from selling it? No, as long, so they don't care. They, they, they don't own the house. They just have a lien for the mortgage. Um, if, if they, as long as they're paid, see, the house can't be sold without them being paid off first, you know, and that's done at the closing table with the title company or closing attorney, you know, but that mortgage doesn't prevent a deal from happening if the numbers work, if the mortgage is less than the price that you need to do the deal with. So to answer your question, no, they can't prevent that. Rich Aris at all to do you run across commercial deals? Um, I try to, at least once a month. You know, I'm working on a lot of stuff, you know, but does it come to fruition <laughs> it is, is the thing. that it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a different animal, man. But again, it doesn't cost you any money. It's just time. Teresa B. <laughs> Teresa B. said, maybe you need that, need a running title What with that info uh, going across the screen, <laughs> LOL. Yeah, it, it, won't, it won't allow me to do it with a live, live feed, uh, Ms. Ms. Teresa. Um, <laughs> Uh, Nassim, uh, me said, do you have a list of questions to ask sellers? Yeah, you can um, just just go to YouTube and do a search for top 10 questions to ask sellers. You should see my video. Uh, Gabe Lauer said, I was watching just, I was watching, just didn't know if that was the only one I needed uh, because I've seen some that use multiple contracts. Well, you're going to use multiple contracts and, and they can have different verbiage, but um, that one contract can be used for a buyer and a seller if, if the uh, buyer is okay with it. All right, one more here. Um, all right, I'll ask you this last question here. Um, well, I think it'll be the last one. Lex Diamond says, in your opinion, what would you say are the top three wholesaling marketing uh, strategies? Uh, obviously, abandoned signs. Um, direct mail would be two. And number three, um, the internet, you know, so social media slash the internet. So uh, those would be the top three. So uh, everyone, I'm glad you came out tonight. Uh, as I said, I may continue with the other six through 10 next week. I'm not sure yet. I may do a video to complete that, but I'm going to complete it. So we'll see what's up. But again, I appreciate everyone that, um, showed up tonight. Uh, hopefully this was an informative webinar. Uh, share it, tell friends, family members. Um, it'll be up so you can share this. And again, subscribe to the channel.